Islam denounces terrorism. Recently, Charlie Sheen sent a letter to President Obama asking to investigate 9-11 as a potential inside job. Whether idiotic Muslims or Zionists carried it out, it wasn't done in Islam's name, but by a devil-inspired mob. All Muslims are being demonized because of the acts of a few stupid terrorists and their indiscriminate harm. We shouldn't tolerate them, but expose their deviant form of jihad which does not represent beautiful Islam. In 1979, a Khawarij group besieged Mecca with guns, demanding expulsion of non-Muslims and the power to rule. Their leader, Juhayman, mistakenly thought he was supporting the Mahdi and turned away from scholars as a fool. Fueled by Ikhwani books of Said Qutb and Jihad wa Takfir, Juhayman took signs from Satan-inspired dreams. Wiping out charitable work, his sect broke away from mainstream people of the Sunnah and went to extremes. Impatiently frustrated with Salafi sheikhs, they mutated, declaring taking the blood of fellow Muslims as lawful, labeling rulers and sinners as kafirs or apostates, taking the law into their own hands, like all extremists, awful. The Saudis cut telephone lines and deprived the Khawarij of any publicity, gassed them out and had them killed, proving that without scholarly guidance, hotheads can easily incite ignorant youth and claim prophecy is fulfilled. When the Khawarij raise their ugly head, they are destroyed by the Ahl Sunnah, but they are not something new. In existence since Islam's early days, even the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him called them the dogs of hell, for he knew. Once, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was distributing wealth, their founder, Dhul Khawaisara, barked, Fear Allah and be just. The companions wanted to kill him, but the Prophet restrained them and revealed to them information in trust. He, peace be upon him, said that from that man's progeny would arise a group whose outward worship would put even the pious to shame. Their Quranic recital would seem outstanding, but they'd pass through religion like an arrow passes through game. Just like a fatal bullet, the Khawarij would enter Islam by a tiny hole but exit, leaving a gaping wound that marred. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said they'd kill innocent Muslims, and if he lived in their time, he'd destroy them just like the Ard. He, peace be upon him, also said they'd be misguided youth with deficient intellect and shaven heads, and appear from the East. They'd make their speech perfect to confuse you, utilizing truth as falsehood, the worst of creatures, the least. He also said that a tree in paradise called Tuba is a reward for those who kill or are killed by the evil sect. So there is no shame involved in exposing, warning against and fighting them, for Allah sanctioned it in effect. The Prophet peace be upon him mentioned 20 times that every time a new generation of Khawarij arises, they'll be defeated, until in the end times, the Antichrist Dajjal will appear amongst them, while they think they're right, conceited. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, fought the Khawarij after they robbed travelers, killed livestock and non-Muslims under a peaceful pact. Whereas Allah has allowed Muslims to eat the meat of Christians and Jews and to marry their women as a fact. They switched allegiance to suit their delusions and lust for power, making up their own rulings without a clue. They declared the third caliph, Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, as a kafir, then fought alongside Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, before declaring him one too. In justice, Ali sent Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, to talk sense to the Khawarij camp, urging them to repent he would call. As he neared, he thought he heard buzzing bees, but it was the Marikun reciting the Quran before their fall. Their foreheads and hands were calloused from prostration when Ibn Abbas entered camp and bravely spoke. One foolishly recited the Quran against him, saying, ignore the Qurayshi, rather they are a quarrelsome folk. The self-amazing clique wore disheveled short thobes and ridiculed Ibn Abbas for wearing a smart shroud. They argued over points of fiqh, as insignificant as killing mosquitoes, yet the companion's blood they allowed. Ibn Abbas said he represented Ali and the companions, may Allah be pleased with all of them, scholars of the Quran on whom it descended, seeing that there were no scholars amongst the Khawarij, only a few listened, others sauntered off offended. They raised three points, that Ali allowed men to arbitrate a war truce, whereas judgment is for Allah alone, that Ali should remove leader of the faithful from his title, and that he didn't take captives was also a moan. 
the scholar Ibn Abbas asked them, If I refute your claims from the Quran and Sunnah, will you all turn back? They agreed, and one by one he annihilated their points as futile, and out of six thousand, a third repented before attack. He quoted that for killing even a rabbit whilst in ihram on pilgrimage, Allah allows men to judge, fine or wave, that Messenger of Allah was erased in the Hudaybiyah pact and that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, would have been taken as a slave. The companions went into the camp and faced the evil Khawarij who threw spears and then swords they drew. But Allah had forsaken the wretched terrorists and all four thousand were killed whilst from the companions only two. The Prophet peace be upon him foretold that the party closer to the truth would kill the Marikun when the Muslims would split. It turned out that Ali's party was closer to the truth than Muawiyah's. May Allah be pleased with both of them and that's where we will leave it. Ali sifted through Khawarij corpses to confirm he was in the right after he slaughtered them in utter defeat. For the Prophet peace be upon him had foretold that among them would be a man with an arm stump that looked like a goat's teeth. Wars are undertaken to prevent injustice and the Quran states that saving one life is like saving all of humanity but brainless terrorists have made it pointless by hijacking and suicide bombs and we need to stop their insanity. True Jihad has always been chivalrous like protecting the innocent and establishing the worship of Allah in calm with noble rules of engagement like sparing women and children and not even allowing fruit trees to come to harm. Jihad means striving for Allah and includes hating sins, speaking truth before a tyrant and principled fight. It isn't to overthrow rulers and kill peaceful folk to steal their wealth. That's the crusader way of flexing might. These neo-Hawarij terrorists are selfish cowards and traitors, not calling with wisdom to Allah straight way. Instead of correcting deficiencies in themselves, they would rather kill indiscriminately and blow innocence away. Instead of establishing the Islamic State firstly in their hearts, they impatiently try to enforce it fully fledged. Instead of worshipping Allah and being kind, even to animals and plants, to revolt and overthrow they've pledged. They use emotional nasheed songs, slander Salafi scholars and nonchalantly label Muslims as being apostate. Most being unmarried youngsters, they recklessly incite violent demos and politically demand an Islamic State. They will claim they want unity and bring together all manner of loudmouths, ignorant of the Sunnah and Quran, but just like the Khawarij who read the Quran without it sinking beyond their throats, they do Islam much harm. Allah has promised hell for those who commit suicide. To add to this, terrorist bombers also murder the blameless. They could end up in hell, whereas they thought it was an easy way to get Hur al Ain in paradise, being shameless. Every time a plot is thwarted, normal Muslims cringe when they turn on the news, hoping the criminals are caught. For sure, we know Al-Qaeda doesn't represent Muslim interests, but spreads fitna or turmoil by the easily bought. We should be glad when terrorists are caught and not support the likes of Bin Laden, the war on terror's pretext. The neo khawarij will never attain honor, but then neither will any enemies of Allah in this world or in the next. Every stupid act of terror, real or fabricated, without a coward's face, is justification for sending in the troops. It is time for the righteous to rise up against the terrorists and root out their misguided and deviated groups. If you're a disillusioned youngster, don't be taken in by angry takfiri politics or Al-Qaeda type hypocrite fakes. Don't be dumb or a patsy or sell your faith cheaply for eternal hellfire, but seek guidance from Salafi sheikhs. Reject Satan's Mujahideen Al-Qaeda, hate-filled Hezbollah Tahrir, Hezbollah and grave worshipper Barel V Taliban and shun the companion hating Shia for they will follow the Dajjal Moshia Mahdi when he appears in Isfahan. The only unification amongst Muslims is to make the word of Allah supreme by the authentic Sunnah and Quran, by following our righteous forebearers or Salaf al-Saleh on the understanding of the first three generations of Islam. As for the rest of us, everyone is a shepherd and will be questioned on the last day by Allah about his herd. Parents must teach their children the beauty of worshipping Allah correctly for terrorism to be deterred.
A companion called Ashhaj bin Qais, may Allah be pleased with him, was loved by Allah and his messenger for two qualities that he had got. Those were tolerance and forbearance, as being gentle beautifies a matter, whereas being harsh uglifies it a lot.